Hey, Rob here for Quadratech.com. We've got Project JK Savannah back in the shop today. It's time to address our need to swap out those gears and our axles. So we called up G2. We've got Bob here today with us. Thanks for coming out. Hey, thanks, Rob. Thanks for having us out here. You bet. And Bob also brought one of your lead techs out, right? Yeah, we have Tommy. He's our lead installer for our Core 44 program. So we awesome. brought him out to make sure we get the job done. So right. he spends his days getting gears set up in Core 44. So that's what he does all day. So he's the, he's the expert. He's the man for together. the job. Yep. Awesome. So you guys brought out with you, we've got our, our set of ring and pinion gears ready to go for the front and rear, our master install kit, Correct. and we've got some new diff covers yep. to throw in there. We got all the parts needed. Now, when you're doing a ring and pinion job, it's really important to head to a master tech at your local 4x4 shop to get the job done right the first time. You're dealing with a lot of very tight tolerances, and you have an array of special tools that are needed to do the job. And really, when you add up the value of buying all these tools, it's going to outweigh the cost of just having your local 4x4 shop get your gear set up for you. Now within that array of tools, you're gonna to need a bearing race and seal kit, a magnetic dial indicator, a good set of digital calipers, an inch pound torque wrench, and we've also got G2's bearing puller here so that we can get the job done. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get Tommy in here. All so right. we can go ahead and get to it. Sounds good. Once you remove the pinion gear from your axle housing, you want to make sure that you hang on to the diffuser that was installed from the factory. You need to reuse this when you install your new G2 gears. Now what this piece does is it installs between the bearing and the pinion seal and it helps slow down the flow or diffuse the flow of gear oil that's coming through the bearing so that it's not going to weep out of the pinion seal.
Now that we've got our pinion gear installed, we went ahead and set the preload on it to about 15 inch pounds because we're using all brand new bearings. And we went ahead and pressed our bearings onto the carrier and got that ring gear installed. Now we can get it all reassembled into the axle housing so that we can go ahead and run a pattern on it and see if we need to add any additional shims. Tommy's getting us wrapped up here, filling up our axles with some fresh fluid, and that's gonna wrap up the install of our brand new gears. Now, as you can see, it required a wide variety of some very specialized tools to get the job done right, far outweigh the cost of taking it to a professional to make sure that your new gears are set up correctly. Now there is a break-in procedure that you need to follow with your new gears as well. You wanna take it easy for the first 500 miles, only running your Jeep about 50 mile increments, and then stopping to allow your gears to cool back down. Then for that remaining two or 2,000 mile period, you're gonna to wanna to take it really easy on your gears just to allow them to finish breaking in and then change out your fluid. Now it is normal to see a little bit of metal in that fluid from the braking procedure. Once you fill them back up with some fresh fluid, you should be good to go. Now if you wanna to talk to one of our Jeep experts about selecting the right G2 axle and gear setup for your Jeep, simply shoot us an email to info at quadratech.com Give us a call at 800-745-2348 or live chat over at quadratech.com. I'm Rob, I'll see you out on the trail.